all things into Christ, whether things in heaven or things in the earth in him. Folks, we're all going back to God. Because of him and through him and to him are all things. So it's not about the destination, it's all about the journey. In this process, in this journey that we find ourselves in, going back to God, we are at different levels in that journey. We're at different parts to that road. When the two disciples were going, walking on the road to Emmaus, from Jerusalem, it's a seven mile stretch. At some point then, on that road, they met up with Jesus. I don't know if it was in the beginning or in the middle of it. Come on. Or towards the end of it. But Jesus appeared and they didn't recognize him because he appeared to them in another form. Think about that. But when he broke bread with them, their eyes were open and they knew that it was he. See? If you want to know him, break bread with him. Woo! Come on. The church is so busy debating about issues. Let me, let me share this with you. You remember the woman that had the issue of blood? Jesus was on his way to minister to Jairus' daughter. He was on his way to minister to a youthful generation. But he first had to minister to those that, were, that had issues. Before he could reach the young people, He's got a minister to the church that's got issues. Wow. Mm -hmm. That woman, he had to touch that woman or she had to touch him. She had to make a choice to press in between the crowds and, and, and on the ground and touch the hem of his garment in order for that issue of blood to dry up. Which is an issue of life, right? Which is an issue of life. The church is losing its lifeblood over issues yes. Preach it, brother. that don't mount to a hill of beans. That's right. And if we're going to reach this younger generation, if we're going to reach the Jairus' daughters of, of this life, we better get over our issues first. Woo! Yes. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We got a generation of young people that are dead. They're dying. Yep. But we can't reach them because we haven't stopped the issue. My oh God, that'll preach today. Hallelujah. Let's deal with the issues. Let's stop being divided over issues. There's only one God, one Lord, one Father of us all. There's only one baptism, only one Savior. Mm -hmm. I was telling somebody the other day, if you had the power, will you send your child to a burning hell for eternity? Well, why would I do that? Well, what if, what if one of your daughters committed mass murder? Or your son committed mass murder? How many have ever seen these people that commit mass murders, these people that do atrocities, and they're there standing before the judge, and the family and the parents of that, that person are crying and begging with the judge not to, not to kill their son or daughter? Spare his life. Have mercy on him. But he's a murderer. Yeah, but he's my son. Amen. 
And yet we believe God will do that. Woo! To his children. One day he's Dr. Jekyll and the next day he's Mr. Hyde. I was going to read scripture. I haven't read any scripture. Well, quoting scripture, that's enough. Let me give you one scripture. Hebrews 11. Mm. <laughs> Hebrews 11, beginning with verse 23. By faith. Tell your neighbor, I need faith. Yes. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe, first of all, that God is. God is who? God is who he says he is. And number two, that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. By faith. Moses, when he was born, he was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edit. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing. What did he do? He made a choice, choosing rather to endure persecution or ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin for a season. See, you got to grow up before you can make the right choice. <laughs> how many know a child doesn't know how to make right choices yet? When he was a child, he was hit. And the Bible says that we are, that we are, that we have died, and our life is what hid with Christ in God, because He was a beautiful child. Look at your neighbor. Look how beautiful they are. You're beautiful to God. He was hid for three months. Those are the three realms in God: outer court, holy place, most holy place. Faith, hope, and charity. Jesus Christ, the Lord. I can say it any way you want. I can say it many ways. But when he grew up, he made a choice. And he refused to identify with Pharaoh and his daughter and the sisters of that day in Egypt. And he chose to endure hardship with the people of God rather than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking for the reward. Hallelujah. How many know that? Who's your reward this morning? Your reward is Jesus. Baby, is this thing still recording? Yes. Can you see? Okay. I don't want to run out. Listen to me. The church has got this, this thing up here that when I get to heaven, my reward's going to be a crown. No, your reward is life. The crown of life here. Your reward is the salvation of this soul. God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, Abraham, I am a shield to you. I am your exceedingly great reward. My reward is him. I want him. I don't want to walk around heaven someday with a crown on my head. I want to be crowned with his life here on the earth. Considering the reproaches of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking for the reward. 
By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured seeing him as who is invisible. My God, endure seeing him who is invisible. That little bird in my, in my wood stove there endured for 24 hours until him who was invisible appeared, and that was me. <laughs> and I appeared and opened that door and let him out. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that he who destroyed the firstborn would not touch him. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as though they were passing through dry land. And the Egyptians, when they attempted it, they were drowned. See, everything that we choose requires faith. When that little bird went in there, into my chimney and down that chute into my stove. He had faith. <clears throat> but he didn't know his faith was going to get him stuck. When my dog crossed the line, crossed the fence, even though he was told not to, but he made a choice, he got tangled in wire. Things happen to us in life because of the choices that we make. It's not that God's abandoned you, not that God doesn't see it. Okay? Not that God wants it. But when He created us, He created us with a freedom to make choices. I can take you to Joshua. Joshua chapter 24, when Joshua said, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. Do you want to serve the gods of, of the other side of that Euphrates River? You want to serve the Amorites, the Mountaineers, the Sayers? Mm -hmm. you want, do you want to serve their God? Or do you want to serve the true God? So you make a choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we choose to serve the Lord. Okay? And they said, oh, no, no. We'll, we'll choose the Lord also. Because look, he delivered us from the land of Egypt. He delivered us across the Red Sea. He delivered us across the Jordan. But they also made bad choices. Okay? And they served other gods. And they complained. And they chose to murmur and complain. And so they wandered around the wilderness for 40 years when they could have made that trip in three days. Because they chose to complain and grumble. What are you choosing today? I choose Jesus. I choose life. I choose Him. So Father, we just pray this morning for those that are listening or watching that they make the right choice, that they choose you, that they choose life and not death. It's got nothing to do with us being reconciled. We've all been reconciled to you. You're not angry with any one of us, Lord. But the choices that we make have consequences. Lord, allow us to awaken to you. Awaken those that are asleep. You said in your word, awake, O sleeper. Arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. You said in another place, awake to righteousness, and stop sinning. For some have not the knowledge of God. And I say this to your shame, the Apostle Paul said. Lord, awaken your people. Awaken this world. Awaken them to righteousness. Awaken them to salvation. 
Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. 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 Thank you for coming this morning.